Brinny instructor and his allies. Let's kill them and gain our freedom at last! You guys want freedom that badly? Well, what are you gonna do once you're free? Get revenge, of course, against the corrupt government for putting us in Hades. <laughs> if you commit a crime, you go to Hades. You want to get revenge for your own mistake? Your desire is born of nothing but ignorance. No! We did the right thing! But the corruptor meant... Ooh, what was that? What happened? We didn't do anything wrong. We were only planting fears in the minds of humans. We made them fear the darkness, midnight, and gave them nightmares. That's all we did! Um, but those are bad things. No. Planting fear in humans is an exemplary action for all demons. By doing so, humans learn respect, begin to live conservatively, and keep their world in order. It's an essential part of keeping a healthy relationship between demons and humans. It's the secret to keeping the universe in order. Huh? I didn't know demons played such a role. That's cool. But putting hard-working demons in Hades? What is the Corrupterman's true endgame? Endgame? Never mind that. The true travesty is that these guys are being imprisoned under false charges. So? Are we gonna fight them even though they're innocent? Well, that's a different story. They are demons, after all. We always prove our points through violence. Oh, Fenric. Will you never cease to amaze me? Valvatoris 2. I gotta say, this is one of the coolest pairings in m most of the games ever. Um, yeah, so this this level is actually almost entirely in your favor. Um, bonuses that you can take advantage of. Experience? Yeah, I'd like that. Alright. So I'm debating what character class to go over. I'm seeing what classes are in this level. Slimy punch! And I did a monster class last time, so I'm gonna do a human class. And I can see we have a beast tamer here. So I'm gonna go over that class. And honestly, this is something I should have made a long time ago. But here we go. Beast masters are a situational character type. If you use a high number of monsters, beast tame beast masters become better. Their ability to improve the stats of nearby monsters is useful unto itself. And a Beastmaster can get a fused magic change pair of monsters can do wicked things in the endgame. However, a person who isn't playing heavily with monster type characters won't benefit heavily from employing Beastmasters. The general stats of this class are adequate, but they lack some behind some of the other damage deals when it comes to normal fights. Wait to level a Beastmaster in the postgame. There are many more options for a Beastmaster during that, that time. Evil icons are unlocked in the Senate that make Beastmasters much more dangerous. This way you can focus on easier characters to level early on and then work on specialists like this later. Um, however, I would argue that since monsters are more useful forever and since there will be a very useful monster type main character in your party eventually, a uh, Beast Tamer might be one of your most valued units. Um, if you have, at the bare minimum, two monsters, you have a use for a Beast Master. And um, let me tell you why. Well, first of all, here's how to unlock the class. Raise a Warrior or Valkyrie to level 15 or higher. Uh, what he means to say is raise a Warrior and Valkyrie to level 15 or higher. Because I've raised the Warrior and Valkyrie up to level 15 or higher independently later times, and neither of them did anything. So you have to level up both. Therefore, their weapon fortes are in spears, bows, and axes. Um, since you're not really going to be doing much damage with this unit itself, I would recommend the spear category, simply because um, you can attack a single unit with a paired monster from two spaces away with a spear, and the other bonus is that spears usually raise your defense, and if it's a support unit, you want to be able to last longer. So, spears seem to be the way to go with Beastmasters, if you ask me. Bows could also be used for the same benefits. Uh, 
uh, they have a negative 25% fire resistance, 25% wind resistance, and negative 25% ice resistance. They have two class specific um, skills that you won't find in any other category. Wild Groom is one of them. This spell buffs a nearby allied monster so that they gain increased experience and mana for three turns. This is a wonderful spell for the late game because you can go to powerful power leveling maps to pull your Beastmaster and then cast Wild Groom on any monsters that you'd like to power up. This makes the leveling process even faster and it costs you practically no time. That's the first reason. The other reason is this, Dominate. Dominate raises the attack value of a monster. Higher ranks of this skill provide additional benefits, so it's good to invest mana in this if you want to really push your monster to their maximum damage potential. Pardon me, Mr. President. Has the rebellion in Hades been put down? No, actually. What now? Speak up. Yes, sir. We have received a letter from the Rebel Force. <sighs> As you can see, it's written with words that I couldn't possibly say out loud. I'd like to obtain your official sanction to... Eliminate them. They must all be wiped from existence. Uh, are you certain of this? Are you going to make me repeat myself? Uh, understood. Your words shall be carried out to the rest of the Netherworld. Sighing so deeply. You're more depressed than usual. Oh, it's you. Hey, you don't have to look so upset. We're supposed to support each other, right? What are you doing here today? Remember our conversation? I came to get that thing, as promised. It is ready to go. It's all yours. <laughs> Thanks. If you insist. Ooh, hints of the boss of the game. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one of the storyless chapters of the game. This is an interesting map for the, at this point. All green is damaged 20%. So, basically, uh, you really have to master your spacing and throwing in this level. Otherwise, you'll take sustained damage, and you might not have the endurance to live it through. But I'm a genius, so this isn't a problem. <laughs> Show of hands, how many took that took that seriously? All of your hands should be up because I am a genius. Anyway, where were we? Um, the Beast Masters. Here are the aptitudes. HP 100, middle of the road, SP 90, attack 110, defense 110, intelligence 80, resistance 80, hit 110, speed 100. Here I come. So, uh, pretty much middle of the road in every category. There. Um, let's see, the tiers are uh, Beast Tamer, Beast Leader, Beast Lord, Beast Queen. Beast Master and Beast Savior. They're beast. That's what they excel at. Alright, and the end aptitudes for the Beast Savior. HP 125. Attack. Uh, no, sorry. SP 100. Attack 135. Defense 135. Intelligence 90. Resistance 90. Hit 135. Speed 125. So like I said, those aptitudes benefit a spear the most for defense and attack. Otherwise, uh, a bow is probably your second best bet. Axe, not so much because, again, those are for primary damage dealers. So bows and spears are the best for a support class like the Beastmaster. But again, you're definitely going to want to make one of these guys if you like, mon if you like monsters. Which you should, because monsters are so much better than before. Anyway... Um, their e abilities, the base e ability is Dark Tamer, which increases the stats of adjacent allied monsters by 20%. And believe me, if you make one of these guys, you'll be doing that all the time. Next, Synchronize. 
Um, sets team attack chance with allied monsters to 99%. Again, you're going to be next to a monster anyway, so this ability is actually useful. Uh, almost all the time for the primary uses of uh, Beast Tamer. Uh, so, it's something you should definitely buy when you first get it. Next, Dark Blood. Increases the character stats by 5% per monster on the map. Not allied monster, not enemy, not enemy monster, but monster. Um, so, on a map like this, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, like, like 10 monsters or so. So, my stats will be 50% higher. Minimum. If I had monsters on my own, it would be even higher. Uh, useful for leveling up your Beastmaster, but humans can only have two abilities as opposed to three, like a normal monster. So, I would equip this, um, if you're going into the item world. Otherwise, you should stick to the other abilities that E, make your monsters better because that's the primary purpose of a Beastmaster and finally M Weapon Master adds 20% aptitude when using magic change weaponry yeah remember aptitude like I talked about with the orc that's a big deal you definitely want to uh, take advantage of this if there's a character that you use primarily with magic change with another monster, this is the kind of ability you'd want to pass on to them. Because, honestly, aptitude probably increases your stats more than anything else outside of direct damage. That's probably debatable. Um, you'd have to ask a mathematician of sorts. And I'm doing the finger quote motion, but you can't see it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, uh, Beastmaster, not horrible in their own right, but their primary advantage is strengthening your normal uh, monster units, and in this game, you will be using monsters more than ever. All the more reason to make a Beastmaster, which, and you could easily have a Beastmaster by Chapter 3, probably Chapter 2. Remember, you only need a warrior which you already have from the outset, and you've probably been using ever since. And a Valkyrie. And, um, by all means, uh, create a Valkyrie. They're pretty good in their own right. Um, Warriors should probably use axes, and Valkyries should probably use swords. Um, bows are another option. Flying... Press! Have you liked my strategy? I've been avoiding those green squares like the Dickens, haven't I? Um, yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, in Disgaea 2, I used, uh, Hurricane Slash! Was that the first time I used that move? Might have been. Boom! It, it, it might have been the first time I've used that move. I like that one. Um, if you've seen the prior two games, the, like, Hurricane Slash has been in every game since the first, and it's consistently gotten crazier and crazier. Yeah. Anyway, like I was saying, Beastmasters, uh, this guy too, I probably abused them more than in any other game. But again, Wood Golem, my favorite, my favorite monster class. Um... Definitely the best in Disgaea 2 for one primary reason, and that's that their innate ability, Photosynthesis, they regain 20% of their HP every turn. In Disgaea 3 and 4, it's only 10%. Nowhere near as useful as it was before. Like, 20%. That's a lot when you make your um, HP as crazy as it could be. Um... Honestly, they, they could take entire levels out by themselves um, with, with their re recovery. It, it was insane. And they had really, really good attack. One of the best of all monster classes and good defense as well. 
So they were walking tanks. Um, and, you know, mon Beast Tamers, they just made your attack stronger or made you gain experience faster. And the other great reason they were great in Disgaea too was their, um, their, their, their one of their primary attacks called Rush Hour used to be a three x three attack, so it would hit it could hit a maximum of nine enemies. That was like the epitome of um, area of effect attacks back then. That's in Disgaea three they nerfed it down to a single diamond. Into in no sorry not a diamond an X. So you could hit a maximum of five enemies instead. Paltry. No, not poultry. Paltry. Um. So Disguise Three, they were a shell of their former selves. Disguise Four, pretty much the same, but their raw stats are still great, and I can't help but like them. So I can't take them down. I, I've still made one every single game since this guy 2 because they didn't exist in this guy 1 but man were they overpowered in this guy 2 I, I, I although I again I'm so sad that uh, Nipponichi nerfed them to the degree that they have um, yeah uh, other than that I'm, I'm about to win and I don't have much else to say Hurricane Slash! Doo -doo -doo. 